You know, guys, when you sit down for an hour and 10 minute interview with uh, Bob Iger, there is plenty to share. We did share a great deal of it yesterday. And by the way, we will be making the entire interview available, uh, we hope, fairly soon. Still putting things together uh, for that. But uh, did want to share a bit more because, of course, when Iger took over in 05, you know, the power of the platforms we talk about so often on this program, well, it was nowhere near what it is today, whether it's Apple or Amazon or Meta uh, or Alphabet. Uh, but that was one of the reasons why, at least Iger said, he considered and did that deal to acquire Fox. And one reason why Rupert Murdoch, the man who built Fox, was willing to sell. I think what, what we're seeing today in terms of the scale of those companies in the media space, which probably shouldn't surprise us, um, but the enormity of it all is still just mind-boggling. Um, and look, I, I wouldn't have predicted that, except I will say that when we did the Fox deal, uh, it was all through the lens of needing scale to achieve success on, in the direct-to-consumer digital platform space. None of it was viewed as a, basically a traditional media play. Uh, we knew that we'd be running the businesses we were buying uh, on traditional um, platforms with traditional business models. But in terms of the value creation, it was all tied to the growth of digital platforms direct to consumer yeah. globally. Was it more about money with Rupert and less about legacy of the acquired properties? I, I, I don't know. I don't know if you say money per se, but Economics. Rupert was intrigued. Rupert was very focused on the scale that was necessary to be successful as a media company in a new world, particularly with the um, incursion or... Uh, if you want to call it that, of the tech companies getting into the media space. And he had genuine concerns about how his company was positioned in that marketplace and thought that his shareholders, and he, including his family, would be better off in, in combined right. than, um, than going it alone. Yeah. And I think he was looking for top dollar. Um, uh, in many respects, he got it. Do you feel like that's been a successful deal? Um, you did pay a high price. It was a high multiple for those assets. Obviously, then we ran into COVID and so many different issues. But yeah. sitting back now, are you happy that you paid that price? Yes. And I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why. First of all, um, we divested certain assets, including the 39% stake in Sky, which went for a very high price. Thanks to my parent company. And so we reduced. In fact, you were the one who told me at some point. Well, that was you. You made the call and told me they had pulled out of that their won, pursuit of Fox. Right, yes. that you'd won Fox. Yes, which yeah. only signaled to me that they, they would be even more aggressive about buying the controlling stake in Sky. Right. Um, so we reduced the size of the acquisition by a significant amount, more than we ever expected. And we also sold off the... Um, the RSNs or the, the regional sports It was a network. good sale, by the way. <laughs> well, it was a good sale. We, at the time, we were a little bit disappointed in the price because it was a little bit lower than we had hoped. But looking back and seeing what we now see, our timing was propitious, I guess yes. you'd say. So when you look at that, I think, first of all, you have to reduce the size of the purchase significantly. But then you look at the assets that we got and you look at today's world and the need to, to go back to the question you, almost, you asked me almost at the beginning. Do we have the scale and the diversity of content right. to, to uh, attract a diverse subscription base or audience? Without the Fox assets, we wouldn't have that. Of course, Jim, we talked a lot uh, yesterday about that incredible track record of getting these founders to sell them as companies, whether it was Steve Jobs at Pixar, Ike Pullmutter uh, at Marvel, uh, George Lucas, of course, as well, and Rupert Murdoch. But uh, the Fox deal was by far the largest that Iger ever uh, undertook. And, you know, it's up to his successor, Bob Chapek, now to make it all really work. But as he pointed out, there are a lot of assets sold that did reduce the overall ticket price. Well, first, I want to salute Christine McCarthy, who uh, just extended her contract to July of uh, to 2024, which is mm -hmm. really good news. I'm sorry, June 30th. Uh, the reason why that's important is because she's steady him. David, uh, one of the things that I wish that Iger had talked about, and this interview has been incredible, but do you think that deal could be done now with this, this amount, these people in Washington? No. No, uh, it's hard to imagine uh, a, no. a deal of any si significant size in an industry like that. Uh, with the scrutiny it typically gets, could get done. I mean, yesterday, for example, 
uh, we shared when, when he talked about the idea that if Steve Jobs had lived, they would have had conversations about Apple and Disney getting together. And in fact, Bob said he thinks it would have probably. Uh, you can't imagine something like that in this current environment uh, ever being contemplated, let alone getting to the finish line, Jim, unless there's a willingness on the part of companies to go to court against the U.S. government. And, you know, in 2022, we may start to see that because there are certain companies when it comes to M&A that are going to, going to want to pursue things. Uh, and they're being told right now, all right, if you want to do it, expect you're going to have to go to court. You probably or could win, but it's going to take a while.